the approach to learning is first and foremost uh, human-centered so around the learner, their capacity, interests and passions. That's, that's what's at the core. And at the same time, one key thing is whatever we're learning, we're learning how to learn. So a piece of it is always some metacognition, developing learning skills, learning strategies, trying different methodologies, seeing what works, what's best for each learner, what, in which ways they can develop their own processes, ways and techniques to, to learn. We tackle numeracy as part of life, as part of the world, as part of what we do. So many numeracy concepts, elements, pieces of mathematics are developed together with history or with science or with language, whatever they fit in transdisciplinary projects. For example, we've had the Islands project with the explorers. They learned and developed things about government and structural in society. They learned about science, climate, how one island has different biomes, diversity, the impacts of rains, storms and whatnot. And they worked on resources, budgeting, internal economics of, a, of an island or a society or a situation. So whether it is in some of the sessions that are math, only in some of the sessions that are transdisciplinary projects, we're always working with reality. We're always uh, getting the learners out there into the world as much as we can and whatever we bring in is something that's current, that's part of their lives or is something they can see being part of their life very soon. This means um, when we were working on percentages, we went to the supermarket to calculate the value of discounts and we actually figured out what was the best value product to get based on that. That allows them to contextualize their learning, to realize the purpose and the value of the learning, to practice it in an environment that feels real, that feels authentic. But there's also the math dojo, which is an open mathematical space for everyone to learn and practice. I have learners who come into math dojo and they just learn new concepts, practice those concepts, ask me for help whenever they get stuck and continue to develop vast math knowledge. We do make sure that all of our day-to-day -day activities that include math are very real and life-related, so they're contextualized in a way that they understand what's the point, they understand what's the purpose. It's, it's about understanding basic economics, understanding how to redesign your room, your floor plan, your measurements. So for example, a learner who wanted to do something artistic but math-related, we started looking at the golden ratio we started looking at the work of Escher, who was a fantastic geometrist and a fabulous artist. And this learner started producing works of geometry and symmetries that was artistic work and felt really, really rewarding, but at the same time developing the mathematical concepts along the way. He was so proud of it, it was the piece he decided to show at Showcase. So we put together curriculums from four or five different countries and created our own scope and sequence. And this scope and sequence aims at guaranteeing that all learners will live with all the mathematical skills that they need in order to thrive and live fulfilling purposeful lives. One key difference with uh, many other schools is we don't necessarily pace all learners by age at the same rhythm. So we always have different groups and there's always the math or just space where the learners accelerate, learners cover up things that many of their peers have done in the past but they haven't. And it's always, what do you need in your math right now? What's going to get you engaged? What's going to feel useful? It's not, uh, you're fast, you're slow. We don't, we don't talk in those terms and we don't compare. We just figure out where are you at and what's next. And I've noticed learners don't care too much about comparing themselves to each other if you don't start doing that for them.